What's up guys, in today's video I'm going to take you through five of my favourite bicep exercises. Now, I'm never ever going to restrict myself to simply doing only five bicep exercises, that would be silly. But, if I was in a scenario where I had to choose five, these would be the top five which I would choose. So, starting off in no particular order, we have the barbell bicep curl. This is a solid exercise, but it's an exercise which a lot of people tend to cheat on. There's quite a lot of swinging when doing this movement, so I would always make sure that you do it in front of a mirror so you can check what it is that you're doing and pay particular attention to what your shoulders are doing because a lot of people, including myself in the past, tend to have one shoulder elevate a little bit higher than the other when they swing the weight up. Now, in my opinion, it's okay to cheat a little bit near the end of the set when you reach concentric failure, just as long as you squeeze the contraction at the top and slowly lower the weight back down to the bottom. Quick tip for the biceps, you'll notice that you're very fresh to begin with, particularly on the first or second set. You'll tend to be okay, but when you get to the third or fourth set of that particular exercise, don't be surprised if you need to lower the weight a little bit in order to keep your form and to get the desired number of reps. The next exercise would be the preacher curl machine. Now the reason I would choose this one over the free weight preacher curl, say for example with a barbell, is because the tension is constant when you use the machine. So that means that at the very bottom of the movement and at the very top of the movement, the tension is consistent. And the thing is with the free weight, the closer you get to the top of the rep, the tension tends to disappear a little bit to the point where your forearms, if they're 90 degrees to the ground, there's almost no tension whatsoever. The next exercise is the incline dumbbell curl. Now with this example, you're gonna lean back on an incline bench. The benefit of this is that you're gonna try and eliminate as much swinging as possible so you keep your elbows fixed and your shoulders fixed. Now the reason for changing up the angle of your torso is to manipulate the tension at different points in the movement. So in this example, if I'm leaning backwards, it's gonna create more tension at the bottom half of the rep. So this is usually where most people tend to be weakest. So the idea behind it is to strengthen up this point in the movement. If you were to flip around and lean forward on an incline bench, the opposite is true. You're now gonna change the tension so that it's now greater at the top portion of the movement. So when doing this, you're gonna find it very hard to stay at the top. Whereas when you initiate the movement, it's gonna be a lot easier to do so. And the theory behind working on the weaker points in the curl, such as the bottom portion and the top portion, means that when it comes to doing a traditional standing upright curl, because you're stronger at these two points, you should be able to lift more weight overall, okay? And that means that you can lift more weight in the hypertrophy rep range, which should result in more gains. You'll also find that your bicep has a fuller, more 3D look to it. And the final exercise would be the single arm preacher curl. Now, one of the reasons why I would do this is first of all, so I could iron out any potential imbalances between the left and the right side, but it's also that I can really take advantage of going to complete failure. So going to absolute eccentric failure. With most of the other previous exercises, I could go to concentric failure, but if I don't have a spotter, I can't really take advantage of going all the way to eccentric failure. So what I would do when I start to fatigue when doing these single arm curls is I would assist myself on the concentric phase, okay? So I'd use my free arm to help lift the weight up, and then I would just very slowly lower the weight back down to the bottom. Keep doing that until I've reached complete failure and I can no longer control the descent. So there we go, five of my top bicep exercises there. But like I said before, I would not limit myself to just doing five bicep exercises. I do like to vary it quite a lot. Vary the exercises, vary the grip positioning, angle of my torso, along with the rep ranges. Hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to subscribe. 